Let's bring in the author of The Last Queen, Elizabeth II's 70-year battle to save the House of Windsor, the Platinum Jubilee edition, Clive Irving, along with People magazine writer and reporter Stephanie Petit. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Do appreciate it. Stephanie, we'll begin with you earlier today for the first time uh, as Britain's newly crowned King Charles addressed the world. Your thoughts. Break down the speech for us. It was about nine or ten minutes, I think. Yeah, I mean, King Charles, I have to get used to that. King Charles addressed the nation. It, it, he paid tribute to his mother, but he also went right to business. He named his wife, Camilla, as his queen's consort officially. And he also named his heir as Prince William. And he immediately bestowed the title of Prince of Wales and said that Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, formally, she will be the Princess of Wales. So he got right to business. What was also stunning was that Charles looked emotional. You know, this is not something we're used to seeing from Queen Elizabeth. She always kind of kept that stiff upper lip. But Charles kind of was right in the face, and you could hear in his voice how emotional he was following the loss of his mother. Also, when he spoke about his children as well, you could tell. Clive, Union flags will be, will be raised uh, over the weekend in recognition of King Charles for 26 hours. Um, you wrote the book on his mom. Um, this is obviously too early to tell, but we do have 50 years of watching uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles. Do you think he will fill his mother's shoes? That's a really tough question. I don't think anyone can fill his mother's shoes because she had a completely different style uh, than he does. She kept her mouth tightly closed on anything resembling personal opinion. So the amazing thing after 70 years of this most famous woman in the world, we still don't know now who she was as a real person because none of us has had that kind of intimate contact that would reveal that and certainly Charles has been a completely much more extrovert figure. He's had very strong political opinions on things, particularly on climate change, which is much to his credit. I think that now is going to be a huge test because Britain is left at a very vulnerable moment when things are going very badly with two untested leaders, a new prime minister and a new king. And that's a very um, a tricky situation because the country needs the kind of sustenance mm -hmm. and morale boosting that the Queen was able to deliver. Right, this would be a perfect time uh, for her to be in the position that she was in for 70 years. Stephanie, Britain's royal family is one of the most famous families in the world, and that's in part because Queen Elizabeth led them into the modern era. We saw it with her televised coronation to begin with, uh, and then everything else she did in the years after. Give us a sense of her influence and power, not just there, but around the world. Yes, this is a woman who met with leaders around the world. She met with 14 or 13 of the 14 U.S. presidents during her term. She's met with leaders from all corners of the globe. She's leader of over 50 countries as leader of the Commonwealth. So she's worked with all kinds of people and everyone kind of feels like they lost a grandmother yesterday. Um, she's in the U.K. They're they see her on TV, they see her, they hear her on the radio, she's on the Christmas broadcast every year. She's been part of everyone's life if you are, you know, under 100 years old. So it's going to be a very, very crazy change. It is amazing to say if you're under 100 years old, isn't it? Uh, seven decades yeah. of service. Claude, the king and queen consort Camille entered the Buckingham Palace uh, for the first time today as the, as the crown. They are walking into a new era, as you pointed out, uh, of uncertainty. What's next, at least in the short term, as Britons mourn for the next 10 days? I think that uh, the mourning is universal and profound, but at the same time, Charles will have to begin to uh, appear at the helm to be to be visible in a way that he's not before. And the setting of Buckingham Palace is very interesting because the Queen was unable to be in Buckingham Palace for the last one and a half years, basically, because she wasn't able to deal with that kind of uh, travel. And the question now hangs over whether Charles will adopt Buckingham Palace in the same way that the Queen did, or whether he'll have a different approach to it. Uh, I, I believe his, his plan to have a much smaller residence within the palace with the Queen, with Queen Camilla, and that he wants to turn the pal parts of the palace over for other purposes to be a ki kind of uh, loo equivalent of the Paris, Paris Louvre galleries where they have this amazing art collection. In other words, to make it more of a people's palace, which mm. is a phrase that reminds you of Princess Diana, who was called the people's princess.
Hmm. There's a lot to look for over just, you know, the next 10 days or so, just with with how the nation mourns, but also what happens afterwards, as you point out, with a, a new prime minister and now a king for the first time in generations. Uh, Clive, Stephanie, thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.